morning. Good morning. Did you have people arriving?
afternoon. And so, let's begin uh, on the first page of the Order of Service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. We pray together. God of wonder and of joy, grace comes from you, and you alone are the source of life and love. Without you, we cannot please you. Without your love, our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit, and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, that we may worship you now with thankful hearts and serve you always with willing minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to stand and sing our first hymn now. blessing on them, to share their joy and to celebrate their love. Marriage is a gift of God in creation, through which husband and wife may know the grace of God. It is given that as man and woman grow together in love and trust, they shall be united with one another in heart, body and mind, as Christ is united with his bride, the church. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of sexual union and joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It is given as the foundation of family life, in which each member of the family, in good times and in bad, may find strength, companionship and comfort, and grow to maturity in love. Marriage is a way of life made holy by God, and blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, with those celebrating a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty, which all should uphold and honour. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Michael and Margaret are now to enter this way of life. They will each give their consent to the other, and make solemn vows, and in token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. We pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfil God's purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. First, I am required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry to declare it now. <laughs> so Michael and Margaret, the vows you are about to take is to be made in the presence of God, who is judge of all and knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. <laughs> Michael looks happier than Margaret. <laughs> So, Michael, I'm going to ask you a question, and hopefully the answer is, I will. Michael, will you take Margaret to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Margaret, will you take Michael to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. There's a question for all of you now, which you'll find at the bottom of the second page, and hopefully you can answer it nice and loudly with the words, we will. Think you can manage that? Yes. Maybe try a little harder. <laughs> with you, the families and friends of Margaret and Michael support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come. We will. The end's just come off my microphone. <laughs> God our Father, from 
the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessings upon Margaret and Michael, that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, in holiness and commitment to each other. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to have our reading, which Margaret is going to come and read for us. So if you two would like to take a seat over here. The reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your forbearance be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. In nothing be anxious, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honourable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So we now move to the part of the service entitled The Marriage. So Michael and Margaret, I now invite you to join hands and make your vows in the presence of God and his people. So Michael, repeat after me. I, Michael, take you, Margaret. I, Michael, take you, Margaret. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. Richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. Repeat after me. I, Margaret, take you, Michael. I, Margaret, take you, Michael. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. I've been burning a hole in my pocket since I put my fleece on. <laughs> let us pray. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to Michael and Margaret a symbol of unending love and faithfulness, to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made this day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please after me. Margaret, I give you this ring. Margaret, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. All that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, 
repeat after me. Michael, I give you this ring. Michael, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son. So in the presence of God and before this congregation, Margaret and Michael have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. But before you clap. <laughs> Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. And now let's pray a blessing for them. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love, peace and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Margaret and Michael in their new life together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, awake and asleep, in joy and in sorrow, in life and in death. And finally, in your mercy, bring them to that banquet where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him both in body and soul, and living together in faith and love may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> actually going to register but we are going to sign some registers um, and uh, Miriam and Jane are going to play for us while we do that so please enjoy the music and uh, I need the witnesses as well.
Do please remain standing. So, let us pray. May God, our Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.
But I'm used to that, and I wore these because I felt more stable at home. My ankle. Good. They may not look good, but they're quite interesting.
Cut. Cut. Yay. Yay. Can you do that again, Mike? I'll pick you up. Come on, Michael. Just take it. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it
She was so self-effacing uh, that in her first audition she performed, she performed as instructed, and then since everybody else who auditioned in front of her had left, she made for the exit, and they had to run after her and drag her back in order to offer her the part. At this point, I did manage to get some headlines out of Margaret, always prefaced with, oh, I was lucky. <laughs> anyway, she was lucky enough to be in a number of pantos. Mother Goose with Stanley Baxter, hands up if you've got a clue, Stanley Baxter. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're a lot, a lot of old people here. <laughs> Aladdin with Scylla Black, Charlie Girl with Bonnie Langford, Dora Bryan, Nicholas Parsons, Barbara Windsor, and Paul Nicholas. Were they all in Charlie Girl? They got that right. <laughs> and needless to say, she loved it. She was lucky to play the lead in Oklahoma and in Carousel. She was lucky to perform to sell out at the Birmingham Hippodrome when she was the lead in South Pacific and in Annie, she was Annie, in Annie Get Your Gun. I do know, Margaret, you have hated me telling you all that at such length, but I was spellbound to hear it all, and so I'm assuming that it's jaw-dropping news to many of you too. Margaret's later career was in administration for Birmingham University, mainly in the biology, biological sciences department, and I know they're represented here as well. Mike, similarly, he tried to persuade me that he was an abject failure. But unlike Margaret, he did give me good supporting evidence. <laughs> <laughs> electronics at Southampton University <coughs> and he got a job with Plessy making iridium phosphide LEDs and lasers. He got sacked after seven months of failing to make iridium phosphide LEDs and lasers because he wasn't sufficiently dexterous for the practical aspects. So then he decided he's going to medical school but these are his words he got thrown out for failing his exams. His next decision was a good one. He decided to train as a nurse, and that worked well. He was a staff nurse at Sally Park Hospital. Sally Oak Hospital, sorry. His role morphed over the rest of his career with the NHS, gradually and moving from patient care to what he calls a grey suit role. And he was retired from the South Birmingham Health Authority after spending a couple of years in governance, which he says was just ensuring staff did what they were supposed to. Mike and Margaret both loved travel. I said that before I'd seen all of these tables, so you got the clue there. Yeah. Margaret's the one who's been everywhere. She's been to Malta, Madeira, US, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, Australia, Cyprus, a lot. Austria, Italy, Greece. She has never set foot in France. <laughs> Mike, he loves lakes and mountains, so his travels include many majors to Austria and Switzerland. It's okay. Margaret lived with her brother George for 22 years until he died in February 2021 during lockdown, so you can imagine how tough that was. Shortly after that, Margaret Tucker, Christchurch, she suggested that Margaret should join the Christchurch walking group, presumably to make social contact. Through that group, she and Mike became friends. In April last year, another Christchurch friend, Pat Clayton, mentioned the Sistine Chapel exhibition in Digburn. They were both interested and went together. They now look back on that as their first date. So, my take, you think you've been in Italy all this time, you've been in Digburn. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really quite exciting. <laughs> A few days later, that's after the Sistine Chapel occasion, Mike phoned uh, Margaret up with what those of us who know him would say was a very Michael offer. He gave Margaret a list of five dates for things he was intending to go to and invited her to join him on any or all of them. <laughs> I don't know how many of those dates Margaret accepted, but it's clear now, 17 months later, that Mike's unusual technique. <laughs> And I can't end without referring to Mike's other great love. 
You know what's coming. Bridge, bridge, and more bridge. And I said, no, from Margaret. <laughs> um, to be fair, Margaret did give it a go. And at her first lesson from Mike, she bit a biscuit, broke a front tooth, and it cost two and a half thousand pounds a year. And so the lesson before her was to Mark to spend some Florentine biscuits. It may cost more than you think. <laughs> Mike and Margaret, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today, and I'm so honoured um, to be allowed to speak, even if you didn't want me to. Mike, you're a lucky man indeed. Um, Margaret, you look absolutely stunning. But I do know that actually what you just can't get into your head is that it's your inner beauty that stunts Mike most of all. And Mike, you've got to stand and say, I'm lucky. She is special. We've got to go through it somehow. That's going to be hard. Margaret, I laid up Mike dearly, um, and I'm thrilled to know that somebody else does. <laughs> and uh, you love his honesty, his humility, his humour, his singing, and his rather good. You will both bring such happiness to each other. So, I would like you all to stand and join me in the Here's to Mike and Margaret. Mike and Margaret.